Let me guess, you clicked on this video because you have been struggling with Power Apps patch function. You are not alone. Patch is not an easy function to deal with, not because it is badly designed, just because of the functionality and the way that internal conditions are designed in it is somehow confusing. Sometimes you expect it to modify a record inside a table and it doesn't. Sometimes it does, but instead of modifying that record, it creates a new record with your updates. And sometimes it works on one day and it doesn't work on another day. And it all goes into the way that this function is designed and all the conditions that it checks before it inserts a new record or update it. And in this video, we are going through all of that. Stay with me. If you just look up the patch function on Microsoft Documents, you will find this. We use patch to modify or create a record in a data source. And the syntax looks very simple, but kind of weird when you look at it if you really don't understand what it does. Patch accepts a data source, and that data source can be anything. It can be some external data source like SharePoint, Dataverse, or anything else that you want, or an inside app data source like a table, like a collection, anything like that. The second parameter that you need to provide for this function is the base record. Basically, you need to point out the record that you want to update. And right after that, you need to provide the change to that record. So whatever the property that the base record has, you can specify it inside change record and provide the new values so those properties will be updated. Let me give you an example. Something like this. Let's say we have a collection inside our app called call to patch. It has four fields from F1 to F4, and the values are A1, A2, A3, and the last column, which is F4, is number. The others are string. Let's say we want to update this record and we want to set the F4 field to 50. So regardless of which one the cell is, we need to specify the record that we want to update. And this one record is our base record. In patch formula, we say, hey, this is the data source that I want to update, call to patch reference to the base record, which is basically this record, and finally, the value that we want to replace. We want to update the F4, so we provide a record. Inside Power Apps, we specify records with curly brackets. So we say F4 equals 50. So it picks up the base record. It replaces the value of F4 with 50, whatever it was there. Let's see it in action. Inside Power Apps, I created a collection. So if I click on this guy, you see I've used clear collect and I created a collection called call to patch. And it has exactly the same values that we have there in our PowerPoint slide. F1, F2, F3, and F4. And as you can see, F4 is a number. And I added all those records that I had there. So when someone clicks on this button, it creates a collection. And I'm displaying all those values directly inside this data table. So if you look at this data table, you will see that the items is exactly the same collection. Now, we would like to patch this record, and we want to set the F4 field to 50. So I put a button here, and still there is no functionality. I can put the patch function here. Let's say patch. I specify the collection or the data source that I would like to update. Then I can specify the record that I want to update. At the moment, we have a data table here. But even if this data table is not here, that we can go for selected item, we can simply specify the record like this. So F1, the value is B1. F2, the value is B2. F3, the value is B3, you see all these values must match because patch is looking for exactly the same record. It matches everything in that data source to find the exact record that you want to match. And finally, I would say F4 is 30. So this is the base record. This is the record that patch is going to find. Assuming that it finds this record, now I would say, hey, I want you to update the field F4 with 50. I close the curly bracket, and I close the bracket, and I save it. 
I always format text just to make sure syntax is correct. Perfect. And I can click on this, run. No matter which record is selected, if I click on patch test, you see now the F4 value is 50, which means our patch worked fine. Not only that, I can even update multiple columns at the same time. So if I go for, for example, F1, I can say, okay, not only update the F4 field and set it to 50, F1 field, set it to B11, for example. So let me just save it again and run it. Let me reset everything again. So everything goes back to the original state and I click on patch. Everything is good. So F1 is updated, F4 is updated. Let's just for fun click on patch test again. And you see, oops, all of a sudden it created another record with F1 and F4. Everything else is empty. What happened here? And this is the typical surprise that I've seen lots of people are dealing with that, hold on a second, we, we are trying to patch something, it creates a new record. Sure, because you do not refer to the exact match. And why did not find it? Of course they didn't find it, because the record that I'm looking for has the F4 equals to 30 and F1 equals to B1. And that record does not exist here. So no surprise, it doesn't find it. And as a result, Patch says, you know what? I don't know which record you're referring to. I don't find it, but no worries. I will create my own record and I will update it with these values that you provide. And this is exactly what it does. So it created a new record, which everything is blank in it. And it updated the F1 and F4 based on the instructions that you get for the updates. Oh gosh, seriously? But don't worry, it's not that bad. At least you know now that what happens when you try to patch something and update or modify a record, but it creates a new record instead. How can we fix it? Very simple. Instead of hard coding the value here, I can simply say, instead of the hard coded value, pick the selected record and everything is gonna be fine. So I just get rid of this guy and I say, data table two dot selected item. And I just save it and run it. This time, if I pick this record and I click on this patch test again, nothing will happen because basically the values are the same. But if I pick this one and I click on patch test, you will see this value and this value, they change. I can reset it and I can do the same thing all day long. It doesn't create the duplicate records. But your patch depends on the UI or this data table or the gallery that you may put on this screen. Now, let's take it to the next level. This one was a local collection inside the app. What if you want to connect it to a SharePoint list? Inside SharePoint, I created a list called patch this with three columns, title, category, and price. And inside Power Apps, in the same app, I created another screen that represents all the content from that list. I just created a connection to patch this from SharePoint. And this data table that you see here gets its items from patch this. So literally, whatever that you see here comes here. And now you want to patch this guy and see what happens here. Let's say I click on patch selected item and there is nothing inside it. And I want to update the selected item here inside this table. To do that, I can come here. Let me pick this button. I can say patch. So just like the other example, I can say patch this, which is my data source, this time a list inside SharePoint. The record that I want to update, because this SharePoint list is directly connected to this data table, I can say data table one dot selected is the record that I want to update. And the update is exactly like before. So I can say change the price to, for example, 300. I close the curly bracket to specify my object and I close the bracket for the patch. Just like before, I expand it, format text, everything is good. So let's see if it really works. So I pick the first record and I click on patch selected item. Works beautifully. Not only that, even if you put this record inside a variable and then you update that, again, it, it's going to find it. 
not even that. Even if I just come here and I want to update this one and I want to increase the price to 300, and before I push this patch, even if I go to SharePoint and I pick this record, let me change something here. So instead of T2, I would say T22, and I click on Save. Now, apparently, because this record has been updated, if I come here and I click on Patch Selected Item, logically, it shouldn't find it. Let's give it a shot. And I click Patch Selected Item, and you see it not only refreshes this record, it also goes there and finds it. So when it comes to connected scenarios between your Power Apps and any external connector, Power Apps is a lot smarter. So it's not just going there looking for that specific match. It does a lot more than that, and it looks for the ID to match the exact record regardless of all the other fields, because Power Apps knows that SharePoint has an internal unique ID, which we can see it here. I can come here and inside the inside SharePoint, I can say show height columns, and I can show the ID here, right? Apply. So this internal ID is something that Power Apps uses to locate the record that you want to update. So up to this point, we are good. This approach has a tiny issue that we need to go around it. Not always the selected item is good to work with. Let's say instead of showing price here, I want to have a column called unit price. We know inside Power Apps, we have a function called the rename columns. Rename columns, okay? It asks for a data source. It says, what is the old column name? I say it is price. And then it says, okay, what is the new name that you want to pick for it? I would say, yeah, it is unit price. How cool is that? I can close this guy, fantastic. Of course, the price column does not exist. I delete this guy, and again, while the table is selected, I can go to Data Table Preview, and I can add the new field, which is Unit Price, to my table. I didn't do much, I just renamed a column, all right? Now, if I go to Patch Selected Item, this guy would say, hold on. This data schema does not match with what we have in the patch disk. So I'm not going to do that, which is obvious because this guy has a field called price, while this guy doesn't have it. This guy has a unit price that the other one doesn't have it. Although we know they are exactly the same column, but patch doesn't. So what do we do? In this case or anything like that, we can still refer to selected item in the table, but not with the whole record. We need to look up the base record that we want to update from the patch disk based on the selected item. Let's see how I do that. I just delete this guy, have some space here, and I say, hey, look up that record from patch disk. Now, the record that I look up from patch disk definitely has the matching schema with the patch disk as a whole list. I can come back here. And I say the condition that I want to have is going to be this record dot ID equals to data table one dot selected dot ID. So I pick the ID of the selected item here and I look up the record inside the patch this that has a matching ID. Great. Done. I can simply save this guy and now it is happy because he says, hey, this guy has price, this guy has price, and it is the exact match. And now I can update the price. And this time, let's make it 450, for example. I save it, format text, everything is good. Let's run it. So I pick this record, I click on patch selected item, and it's gonna set it to 450. Experiment is enough, let's come to conclusion. In summary, patch looks for the exact match of the base record in data source, table, or a collection. That record may or may not be found. If the base record is found, it updates the fields that they are in the formula. And job is done successfully. 
If not, Patch tries to create a base record of its own, which inside SharePoint or Dataverse is not technically possible because there are some required fields that this guy cannot provide the values on its own. So if it doesn't find the base record, it fails or it doesn't do anything. If it succeeds, it updates the newly created record. Otherwise, you have an error. Now for you, the biggest takeaway from this video is going to be always use lookup for the base record when you patch. Trust me, that saves you lots of hassle. All right, we are done with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know where the like button is. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.